Where do I put these? Why is it whenever I film over here, my battery is about to die? Gotta go change my battery. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and in this video, I'm going to be doing a book haul because I have accumulated a couple of books in the past few days. I think precisely I have 11 books, so let's get into this video. So the first book I have is Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. Um, this book is really, really popular on BookTok, um, a lot of social media platforms. And if you watched my last video, you can skip past these next few minutes because I will be talking about the books that I got in that video. You've seen that, you already know what books I'm talking about. I don't really know what this is about. There's not really a description. Let's research what Magnolia Parks is about. She is a beautiful, affluent, self-involved, and mildly neurotic London socialite. He is Britain's most photographed bad boy, Lothario, who broke her heart. And Magnolia Parks and BJ Ballantyne are meant to be, and everyone knows it. They're in the stars, just suspended in the strange kind of love that looks like hurting each other a lot of the time. She dates other people to keep him at bay, he sleeps with other girls to get back at her for it. But at the end of every sad endeavor to get over one another, it's still each other they crawl back to. But their dysfunction is catching up with them, pulling at their seams and fraying the world they've built. A world where neither has to ever let the other go completely. As the cracks start to show and secrets begin to surface, Magnolia and BJ are finally forced to have the formidable question they've been avoiding all of their lives. How many loves do you really get in a lifetime? Wow, that sounds good. The cover is gorgeous. I think this is like a you either love it or you hate it book, so I'm really, really excited about this one. But look at the cover. Like... I've never seen a book like this, and I'm obsessed with the cover, obviously. Okay, so this next book is Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. I've been wanting to read a Sophie Lark book for a while. I don't really know. I think she does a lot of fantasy mafia-related stuff. I could be wrong. But anyway, I've been wanting to read one of hers, and this has been in my Amazon cart for the past two months, so I'm glad I finally have it. But this cover is so pretty. It has strawberries because I saw a quote on Instagram and it had to do with like why there are strawberries on the cover. And I immediately put it in my cart on Amazon because, I don't know, I'm just easily persuaded to buy a book. This is Mafia. And let me share the synopsis. A match made in hell. The Griffins and the Gallows have been battling for control of Chicago's underworld for generations. Their bitter rivalry reignites when Ada, the youngest and wildest Gallo sibling, crashes a party at the Griffin Mansion, accidentally setting fire to the library. To stave, to stave off all-out war, her father arranges a marriage with Callum Griffin, eldest son and heir. Okay, so it's like an arranged marriage. Cold, ambitious, and brutal, Callum is determined to tame his headstrong bride. Ada is more than capable of giving as as good as she gets, starting with poisoning Callum on their wedding night. <gasps> okay, so when it says like poisoning on his on their wedding night, um, he's allergic to strawberries, so she gives him strawberries. I think that's what happened. I've never read a book like this before, and I'm really excited. So that's what this book is about. This book is by one of my favorite authors ever. I've only read one book and it's better than the movies by Lynn Painter. Gave that book five stars. So I saw this and I had to get it. This is Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter. Um, I'm so looking forward to reading this one because Lynn Painter, she just adds a lot of humor. Just really good banter in her books and I just enjoy reading them and it's very light and heartwarming to read her books because there's nothing really heavy in them. It's such a cute rom-com material book so I'm excited for this one. Um, let me read you guys the synopsis. Bad luck has always followed Olivia Marshall or maybe she's just screw up her family believes she is but when a what are you wearing text from a random number turns into the hottest most entertaining albite anonymous relationship of her life. She thinks things might be on the upswing. Colin Beck has always considered Olivia his best friend's annoying little sister, but when she moves in with them after one of her worst runs of luck, he realizes she's become an altogether different and sexier distraction. He's sure he can keep his distance until the moment he discovers she's the irresistible Miss Miss Dial he's been sort of sexting for weeks. Oh. Okay, and now he has to decide whether to turn up the heat or ghost her before things get messy. Okay, so it's best friend's sister, a little bit forced proximity because she's moved in with him because maybe something happened and she had to move. I think this is so funny. They're like texting each other and 
it's like anonymous and they have no idea it's the person that they're living with that's funny i feel like that should be a rom-com but that's lynn painter so i'm i'm looking forward to reading this one i feel like this one will be such a cute read from lukov i don't think i'll ever learn how to pronounce his name <laughs> with love by mariana zabata I definitely just butchered that but i think it's about an ice skater so that's exciting i've never read an ice skating book before that definitely came out wrong you know what i mean um but the synopsis says if someone were to ask jasmine santos to describe the last few years of her life she oh okay hang on if someone were to ask jasmine santos to describe the last few years of her life with a single word it would definitely be a four letter one after 17 years and countless broken bones and broken promises, she knows her window to competing in figure skating is coming to a close. But when the offer of a lifetime comes in from an arrogant idiot she spent the last decade dreaming about pushing in the way of a moving bus, Jasmine might have to reconsider everything, inclu including Ivan Lukov. So, based off of that tiny little synopsis, I think it may, may be Grumpy Sunshine, Enemies to Lovers, I definitely butchered just so many of those words. Um, I'm becoming a stutter bus, but I'm really excited for this one. The font is like the exact right size. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you're a reader, you know what I mean. Like, I can't have tiny font. This is perfect. I'm excited about this one. I think I've said that for every single book, but bear with me. Yeah, this is cute. <laughs> so I think this is the first fantasy book in the stack. This book I've been wanting to read forever. I've seen it everywhere. It's one of the most popular fantasy books ever. It's Six of Crows. I know a lot of people who read this and they love it. I'm so thrilled to like finally have this in my bookcase because I've been keeping my eye out for it everywhere. Keter Dom. <laughs> a bustling hub of international trade where anything can be had for the right price and no one knows that better than criminal prodigy Kaz Brecker. Kaz is offered a chance at a deadly heist that could make him rich beyond his wildest dreams, but he can't pull it off alone. A convict with a thirst for revenge, a sharp shooter who can't walk away from a wa wager, I think that's how you pronounce that, a runaway with a privileged past, a spy known as the Wraith, a heart render using her magic to survive the slums, a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes. Kaz's crew are the only ones who might stand between the world and destruction if they don't kill each other first. Okay, so I think basically this is six dangerous outcasts, one impossible heist. Um, this reminds me of Dance of Thieves, but I don't think I've ever really read anything like this. I'm super excited because I heard someone on TikTok say it's like found family, so I'm really, really excited for that feature in this book, but I'll let you guys know how I like it. There's also a second book. I think it's a duology. It's Six of Crows and then it's The Crooked Kingdom, and I've heard people say that The Crooked Kingdom is like outstanding, so hopefully I like this one so that I can read that one. I read The Spanish Love Deception last year, and that book was amazing, but Elena Armas also wrote The American Roommate Experiment, and honestly, just like the title and the synopsis made it sound really, really interesting, and it intrigued me, so I bought it. Rosie Graham has a problem. A few, actually. She just quit her well-paid job to focus on her secret career as a romance writer. Oh my gosh, I love it when romance books have, like, romance writers in them. Not a lot of books have that, but I love when that is implemented into a book. I don't know why. Only to enter a creative slump. Then the ceiling of her New York apartment literally crumbles on her. She heads to her best friend Lena's empty apartment, and knowing that Lena has already lent the studio to her cousin Lucas, who Rosie has been stalking for, lack of a better word, on Instagram. To Rosie's surprise, Lucas offers to let her stay with him, at least until she can find some affordable temporary housing. Soon, Rosie discovers that Lucas is intent on coming to her rescue like a Spanish knight in shining armor. Only this one strolls around the place in a towel, has a distracting grin and an irresistible accent, and comes with a set of mad cooking skills. <laughs> and when Lucas learns of Rosie's writer, writer's block, he proposes an outrageous idea to bring back her literary muse and meet her deadline. He'll take her on a series of experimental dates meant to jumpstart her romantic inspiration. Rosie has nothing to lose. Her silly online crush is totally under control, but Lucas's stay in New York has an expiration date, and six weeks may not be enough time for either her or her deadline. 
Okay, this sounds great. Okay, I am definitely fascinated by this and I can't wait to read it. Oh, my books just fell. Court of the Vampire Queen by Katie Robert. I've heard she writes a lot of fantasy books. She also writes like fantasy romance. And I know that her fantasy romance books are kind of on the open door side. They're a little bit more steamier than usual. So I don't know what to think. I didn't know that before I bought this book. So we're going to see how it goes. But I love the cover. Basically, let me read you guys the synopsis. All Mina ever wanted was to escape her father's control. Half human, half vampire, she lived in eternally torn between two worlds, never fully experiencing the pleasures of either, until her father chose her as the pawn in his latest political move, gifting her to the darkly powerful and dangerously seductive Malachi, Malachi? Malachi. Malachi Zion. Malachi is not a vampire to be trifled with. He rules with an iron fist and has a reputation for the darkest of sins. But the longer Mina is with him, the more she realizes he's not the monster she first thought. And as fear bleeds into lust, then trust, then something more, Malachi opens Mina up to a world she's never known, and it could be hers for the taking, including the love of Malachi's two closest friends and companions. Now surrounded by all three men, the center of their shockingly seductive world, Mina may finally have the power to face down her father and take back the life and crown that by all rights should be hers. Okay, sounds good. Definitely forced proximity, vampires. I'm excited for this one. This book is more of like on the realistic fiction side and I saw this at Target and I just had to get it. It's Heard It in a Love Song by Tracy Garvis Graves and some of my favorite authors read this and they said they love it. Layla Hilding is 35 and recently divorced. Struggling to break free from the past, her glory days as the lead singer in a band and a 10 year old marriage to a man who never put her first, Layla's newly found independence feels a lot like loneliness. Then there's Josh, the single dad whose daughter attends the elementary school where Layla teaches music. Recently separated, he's still processing the end of his 20 year marriage to his high school sweetheart. He chats with Layla every morning at school and finds himself thinking about her more and more. Equally cautious and confused about dating in a world that favors apps over meeting organically, Layla and Josh decide to be friends with the potential for something more. Sounds sensible and way too simple, but when two people are on the rebound, is it heartbreak or happiness that's a love song away? Okay, this sounds amazing. More like realistic fiction. These are two parents who are more experienced, recently divorced, and I think I'm going to love this book a lot because I don't think I've really read a book like this. Especially when they're like adults and they've been married and they're both divorced with children. This definitely sounds like a more mature read and I'm excited to see what perspective this book takes and I don't think I've experienced it before. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. This is King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. And this book is supposed to be really good also. It's a fantasy. I kind of forgot. I think this one is also vampires. Someone told me that it's a lot like The Vampire Diaries, which is my favorite TV show ever. I love The Vampire Diaries. So I had to immediately buy this one. Isolde? We're going to go with that considers her wedding day to be her death day. To end a year-long war and protect the people of her kingdom, she is to marry the vampire king, Adrian something something, and kill him. But her assassination attempt is thwarted, and Adrian warns that if Isolde tries to kill him again, he will raise her as the undead. Faced with the possibility of becoming the thing she hates most, Isolde seeks other ways to defy him and survive the violence and political machinations of Adrian's brutal vampire court. Except it isn't the court she ends up fearing the most, it's Adrian and her intense attraction to him. Wrapped in mystery in his past he refuses to discuss, Adrian nevertheless starts to become less of a monster to her. I'm not going to say her name. Despite their undeniable chemistry, she can't help but wonder why the king, fierce, complicated, ambitious, and at times inexplicably tender, chose her as a consort. The answer will shatter her world. So, this sounds amazing. Definitely sounds a lot like Brutal Prince. It's a lot like my favorite show, and I'm really looking forward to see where this goes. Okay, so I did just find out that this book is open to a romance, so if that's not your vibe, I wouldn't read this one. Usually fantasy romance books have some explicit scenes, I guess you could say that, but if you don't like that, don't read the 
Katie Robert and this book. So I read Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. It's one of my all-time favorite romance books. I love Archer Hale. I heard Mia Sheridan also has other books. So I got More Than Words by Mia Sheridan. Mia Sheridan writes her romance books like obviously such good romance but there's always like something deeper going on with like the characters. Like there's always like maybe some trauma or a backstory or something they're like struggling with and that like forces the characters closer together in like a more intimate setting um and they're so vulnerable and i love that about her writing so basically let me read to you guys the synopsis the moment she met callan hayes 11 year old jessica cresswell knew he was a broken prince her prince together they became each other's refuge creating a space in a magical place far from their troubled lives until the day callan kissed her jessica's first real dreamy kiss and then disappeared from her life without a word years later everyone knows who Callan Hayes is. Famous composer, infamous bad boy, what no one knows is that Callan's music is now locked deep inside, trapped between his own inner demons. It's only when he withdraws to France to drink his way through the darkness that Callan stumbles into the one person who makes the music return, Jessica, his Jessie, and she still tastes a fresh, sweet innocence, even as she sets his blood on fire. But they don't belong in each other's worlds anymore. There are too many mistakes, too many secrets, too many lies. All they have is that instinctive longing, that need, and, that, and something that looks dangerously like love. This sounds so good. Like I said, there's always something going on with the characters. And this sounds like childhood friends to lovers. And I don't know, just something about that. I love that. This is Neon Gods by Katie Rubber. This book is about Greek gods, so I'm really excited. Basically, it's about Persephone running away from an arranged marriage with Zeus, the lightning god. And she goes to the underworld. And I think she is forced into a marriage with Hades. I could totally be wrong. Hades has spent his life in shadows and he has no intention of stepping into the light. But when he finds that Persephone can offer a little slice of the revenge he spent years craving, it's all the excuse he needs to help her for a price. Yet every breathless night spent tangled together has given Hades a taste for Persephone and he'll go to war with Olympus itself to keep her close sounds a lot like grumpy sunshine because hades is the god of the underworld but i'm really really excited for this one um the only greek mythology book that i've read is percy jackson and the lost hero series so i loved that and i can't wait to read this one totally forgot to input this book in this video but i also got lessons in chemistry by bonnie garmis this is a very popular book right now um, it was Good Morning America's, like, book club pick, so it was, like, everywhere on my Instagram, so I had to get it. Um, it's basically a historical fiction book about this girl who changes the status quo for women in the society in 1960. So, that's what this book is about. I don't know too much about it, but I had to get it based off of its popularity. I had to see what the hype was about. So, I'll let you know how I like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. And I cannot wait to read all of these books i'm definitely on a book buying ban no more buying books for me i'll let you guys know how i feel about all of these in my monthly reading wrap ups and yeah subscribe if you haven't already click the bell for more notifications and hopefully i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys <laughs>